Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a what have I been sewing. So it's a little bit of a sewing tell and as you can probably tell I haven't done one of these in a little while so I'll be showing you almost everything that I've been making throughout April, May, June, July and a little bit of August which is the month that we're in now. Um, I've got a big old pile of clothes right here next to me and I've got almost everything. There are a few things that I generally cannot find. Maybe they're in the wash or something. What I will do is put on the outfits and show you in the background. If I don't have it with me then I'll just kind of like talk you through it and tell you what it is. But um, yeah let's just get straight into it. I will give you a fair warning. There is a lot of clothes here so I will give you a moment to go and get your cup of tea any snacks, get comfortable, blanket, I don't know, whatever it is you need to uh, set yourself in and then we can get into it. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Aisha and this channel is The Craftpreneur. I do sewing videos, fabric hauls, showing you what I've been making, pattern reviews whenever I have the time and generally mostly sewing and DIY type stuff. The first thing I'm going to show you is this shirt dress. It's still on the hanger. I literally pulled everything out of my wardrobe just to show you. So everything will be either half folded, a little bit crinkled or on the hanger. So this right here is a shirt dress. I used a really cool Hawaiian type print um, in a cotton. I really, really like it because the Hawaiian print is like palm trees. You've got like a dude that's like with a surfboard and then there's like a shark that's like eating a surfboard. Really random, but I really, really liked it. It's super light and airy. And with this fabric, I made this shirt dress, which is McCall's 8030. It's a really straightforward, easy shirt dress. I was able to whip it up in a couple of hours and I even made myself a little tie to go around the waist. As far as shirt dresses go, this is kind of the style that I like uh, in terms of the sleeves because they kind of like roll at the shoulders. It's a very relaxed style. It's a little bit oversized. If you want to see more pictures of this, then check out my Instagram where I usually post um, pictures of the things that I make. If not, I'm definitely making stories of the construction process and all of those fun details so if you haven't already then go follow me there. So the next thing that I'm going to show you are two items that I self-drafted a pattern myself after just seeing this style everywhere and there being a lot of options out there but not anything quite like I would like to wear. So I made this milkmaid style top. So really wanted to have a good emphasis on the bust area. Quite a few of the milkmaid style tops that are out and about at the moment don't have a lot of space, especially if you got the, the big breast assist. So um, I wanted to design one that fit me and my boobs um, and also fit my waist. After a lot of consulting on Instagram stories, I came up with this. This is the top version of what I made and I used this really nice, again, another Hawaiian print cotton and uh, the bodice is corseted, so I did bone this and the back is laced, which makes it adjustable for, you know, if you eat food or you're not eating food or whatever. This one was, yeah, pretty good for a first attempt. Um, I still have the pattern so I enjoyed making the top version so much that I then went ahead and made a dress version. Now this dress I wore on my birthday because I wanted to make myself a little birthday dress. So I was very, very happy that I was able to get it done. And this fabric I absolutely love. This is a viscose that I had picked up um, a couple of months ago. And yeah, absolutely love it. It's like I love the colour. I love the, um, the fit. Um, I like that it gives me enough, you know, space in here. I like also that the way that I did the shoulders and the front, I could still wear a bra if I wanted to, just one that has like the straps are a little bit further to the side and it like you wouldn't even be able to see because a lot of these milk mace style dresses you can't really wear bras with, which might be a problem if, you know, you want a little bit of support. So I put two slits in the front. So I, I added a panelled skirt onto the top part with two slits in it and then the back is just like a normal zipper. So really, really proud of this one. I didn't know if it would work out and the fact that it did and I actually have worn it out more than once is 
a win. So the next thing that I made was this jumpsuit, again with the Hawaiian print. If you watched my last video, you will see that there was a bunch of Hawaiian print in that, and half of the things that I've made are from that haul. So you might be recognizing some of these fabrics. So I made this jumpsuit using McCall's pattern 7872. I've used this pattern before. It was the green jumpsuit that I made uh, maybe like a year, two years back. And um, yeah, I made a few mistakes. Basically, I completely forgot to note down any of the modifications I made in my last pattern. So when I just made it again, I had to make those same modifications all over again. Don't worry, this time I have written it down. I know what to do if I decide to make it a third time. First of all, before the modifications, I have changed shape <laughs> from the last time I made this one whole pandemic and your girl has grown a bit of a butt which I completely forgot to accommodate in this so I had to actually add a little triangle of fabric on both sides so that it could uh, let it out a little bit otherwise it would be too tight and the other thing that I completely forgot is that this deep V here is very very deep and last time I had to add a little button and I didn't this time but I will do that so that um, I can kind of close it up a bit otherwise it'll be all the way down to the crutch and like we 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 don't we don't need to see all of that we really don't so um so yeah other than that it was still a pretty easy make I would absolutely make this again with the modifications of course and uh yeah I really like the print it's a blue viscose with like white Hawaiian print which is absolutely my style at the moment. Super, super relaxed. And yeah, I would absolutely make again one of my favorite patterns once I've made the modifications. So this next pattern is the Allison Tent Dress by Jasmine Desiree Patterns. So there's a pattern designer on Instagram called So Much Jazz. I follow her, she makes so many things and she also designed her own patterns. So this was her first debut pattern, which I bought and I'm absolutely in love with this dress. So relaxed, like tent dresses with pockets are absolutely where it's at. You just throw it on, you can put a heel on and put a belt around it, or you can wear it with trainers and just have it like a big flowy dress with like a tiny little frill at the bottom. I wear this dress all the time and I absolutely will be making at least three more in many of the other prints that I have. It takes up quite a bit of fabric, but that's good if you're trying to get through your stash. And uh, yeah, this fabric you would have seen in my last fabric haul. This is another viscose, so it's like super drapey. And it also means that when I wear this, it like flows in the wind. Like I absolutely love this dress. So absolutely we'll be wearing this again. And this is called the Allison Tent Dress. Big, big recommend. I will leave all the links for places you can like get these patterns if you want to make them. But I would absolutely say, yeah, get this one. It's just like a super easy dress to just wear, put on and also to make. So yeah, highly recommend. Okay, next up I have these linen shorts, which are super, super cute. Okay, so these shorts are kind of one of my favorites at the moment. I've only really worn it once, and that's because these are a tad bit tight at the moment. And that is because I purposefully made these in my pre-pandemic size, only because that's where I'm kind of aiming to get back to, uh, mostly because I don't wanna have to make an entire wardrobe of new clothes because they're all a little bit tight. I'm just gonna fit back in them again. These shorts I have worn once or twice, but depending on how much I've eaten that day, it can be a little tight, but I do really like them. I was trying out a new McCall's pattern uh, when I make these. It was McCall's 8148. It was a really straightforward pattern and I think there is like a matching like blazer, cropped blazer jacket that will go with it. And I do have a little bit of fabric left over. So I think I'll probably end up making the cropped blazer and then turning it to a little short set. Cause we know we like a short set. That's like one of my favorite things to make. This fabric is just like a really nice cream linen and uh, I don't remember where I got it from. It was somewhere in my stash. I think I got it from Abacans because they do really nice linens there. Um, and I had quite a bit of it. And that's usually where I get my big wads of linen. So I suspect that's where I got the fabric from. But very, very happy with these shorts. 
While we are on the subject of shorts, I do have another pair here. These ones are in my current size, mostly because these are kind of meant to be like fairly relaxed shorts. So it's like not gonna be that much of an issue when they're looser. You would have seen this fabric in my fabric haul and I said I was gonna be making a pair of shorts with it. So here they are and I absolutely love them. The fabric has been getting softer and softer the more that I wear them. Um, I still have quite a bit of this fabric left. So I put a poll out on Instagram and I think we will be making a matching really relaxed blazer, one that I can roll the sleeves up to turn this into another short suit because we absolutely love those. So yeah, absolutely love this fabric. Um, the pattern that I used for this was not the same one as the last shorts. This was McCall's pattern 7962. I've actually used this pattern before. Um, I made the I made a really nice pair of embroidered um, leaf print shorts, which I used a upholstery fabric for a couple of years back. If you go through my videos, you'll probably find it. I will link it down below for you. But um, that pattern was a great pattern. The shorts right out of the packet are actually kind of long for me. So I made them a little bit shorter and I did the same with these shorts as well. And I absolutely love that. That's it's one of my tried and true patterns that I will always go to if I need like a short pattern that I know works. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really happy with this. And anyone who follows me on Instagram would have watched me make these in stories because we were debating which pattern to use. But yeah, very happy with the results. And those ones I have worn so many times over this last couple of weeks. I made another pair of Dawn jeans. Not sure if you remember, but my haul when I went to Portugal, and we stopped in Bordeaux and we did that long road trip uh, last October. I picked up this fabric from Toto and this is basically a denim fabric, but it's got a little bit of stretch to it. Now the Dawn jeans by Megan Nielsen are made for non-stretch denim but I decided that I was going to try it because this has like minimal stretch but it does have stretch which means I can make it a little bit tighter and have like more of a fit without it being uncomfortable. I find that when you use rigid denim unless you are getting those measurements precise you can give yourself a little bit of a sausage leg. It looks like your leg is about to bust out of the jean so with a little bit of a stretch that doesn't really happen you get a really nice smooth finish. I made these and everything's like super straightforward forward although I made these in like April and since then I have again changed size so I will have to go back and modify these to make the waist a little bit smaller because right now the waist area is so big that I like kind of need to wear a belt just to have it against my skin yeah I will be modifying these just so that they fit a little bit more snug in the waist area. All right, so we have a really recent make. I made this like two weeks ago. This is a wrap dress and I made it out of this really cute fabric. I am a Minerva brand ambassador. So I got this fabric in exchange for some content. I made this wrap dress, which I absolutely love. And I had some extra fabric. So then I made myself a really, really cute headband. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but like it's, a, it's got like a little knot front. Um, the back is elasticated and I was kind of winging it. So I'm quite happy that it even looks the way that it did. Um, I definitely think I'll be able to perfect it next time round. But it was like a little five minute. Let me just see if I can make this. And now I've got myself the cutest outfit ever. Um, the fabric is like a ITY silky knit. Um, the silky knits kind of feel like silk jersey but it's not actually silk they're very very stretchy and it feels really drapey and silky on the skin they're usually just printed on one side not two sides and uh yeah really good for dresses and skirts and things that you want a little bit of drape and movement to also what's really good about these is they do not fray so I've been very cheeky and just kind of cut the hem and I haven't hemmed it at all and I've worn this like three or four times there's been no curling nothing so yeah for someone who absolutely hates hemming this is like the perfect fabric for me because I don't have to hem it <laughs> So this was a very easy Vogue pattern, 8379. The reason why it's very easy is literally like three or four pieces, very straightforward, 
all straight lines, barely any like, there's no fastenings or anything like that. So it's a really good pattern if you want like a nice, quick, simple dress that also looks nice. And the thing about wrap dresses is they're absolutely adjustable. If you want it to be loose, you can have it loose. If you want to wear it really tight, you can have it tight. If you want to actually like tie it in a knot instead of going through the side hole, there are different ways you can tie it as well. So also, pretty versatile dress. So quite happy about this. I super feel like I'm in like a 60s, 70s show when I'm wearing it. And originally when I first made it, it was actually just past knee length. So the long style really kind of wasn't for me. So I chopped it off and turned it into a mini dress, which is absolutely more me. You can wear it with trainers, you can wear it with heels, dress it up, dress it down, perfect. I'm a big fan of the wrap dress, especially in stretchy fabrics because I get the coverage that I need in the chest area and I'm always able to like eat food and move without feeling super restricted in the belly. So yeah, adjustable dresses are amazing. Okay, so the next thing I have here is a sports top. I have only made one half of a set that I'm gonna be making, but this was because I was just kind of experimenting to see if it worked and it totally did. So now that I have a little bit left over, I'll be using it to make like some cycling shorts type thing. This uh, sports top was actually made from like a underwear pattern by Sophie Hines. Sophie Hines has a few uh, underwear patterns and one of them is called the Alex tank. Now I think it's just meant to be like a tank top. Um, it's been modified to be worn as like a kind of bralette type thing and I decided I was going to turn mine into a sports top because essentially it is the same look and there's lots of different ways you can modify and just like update and change uh, this and it also gives you a really good option for color blocking you can just do it all in one thing but because I only had a little bit of this camo print sports lycra I decided to do some color blocking with some khaki green mesh and also some black lycra that I have and I really like how it looks. So if you see here, the front bit is the camo print and then you'll see here at the front sides, the black and the mesh. And when you turn it to the back here, you'll see that the camo print's on top, the see-through mesh here, and then you've got the black at the bottom. So really, really happy with that. And I've got enough to be able to kind of do the same treatment with a pair of cycle shorts. I think we'll do the top half of the cycle shorts with the camo and then halfway down the leg it will be the green mesh and then at the bottom to close it off it will be the uh, black lycra and then we've got ourselves a nice little workout set so I will be doing that probably in the next month or two. As for the pattern, the pattern's actually super straightforward and easy to make. Really good explanation on how you can do the binding and working with knits and like whether you can use a domestic machine or a serger you can use both and it shows you how to do both which is absolutely great if you are a beginner. On to the next one. Now this one I was literally wearing yesterday. So the sleeves are still rolled up and everything, but this is ha this has become one of my favorite shirts to wear, which means now I have to make more. This shirt is the Paper Theory Olia shirt. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. And this is a great shirt. It also, the pattern also comes as a shirt and a shirt dress. So I made the shirt version and I did make a few modifications. So if you have a look at the front here, you'll see that the front yoke and the arm is all one piece, which when you're actually making it, I had to read the instructions a couple times to understand what I was doing and it took for me to actually look at the like the picture instructions on their website they have a blog post of how to make it to actually see somebody else take pictures and do it on a sewing machine for it to actually click so it is a little bit complicated but once you know how to do it it's very very easy and quite simple I think it's just because um, you have to make sure you're hitting so many different points and there's a lot of right angles in it and to keep them crisp you have to you have to pay attention so if you get that wrong you'll find you'll have to unpick and do it again but apart from that the rest of the construction is exactly like a normal shirt it also has a pocket at the front 
bodice and I decided to not have those. I also didn't bother with a buttonhole on the very top of the collar because I never button anything up to my collar and I also didn't bother putting a buttonhole on the cuffs because again I usually just roll my cuffs. I hardly ever wear a shirt all the way down to my wrist. That's just not really what I do. So I didn't uh, bother with the cuff. I just kind of kept the cuff open so I can just roll it up to where I want it to be. Um, and yeah, that's it. The fabric that I use for this is a khaki green peach skin fabric. And on the inside, it feels like just like a normal polyester or like even a viscose but on the outside it has like this suede effect it's very soft it feels like kind of like it's napped like there's um like like a peach skin basically a little bit fuzzy it's quite drapey and um is actually a little bit um heavier than I thought it would be I thought it would be a lighter fabric so this will absolutely serve me all the way through the winter and as you know I hate hemming so I use my good old bias binding hemming trick which means I don't have to do any hemming around curves which can be highly annoying so I usually just use bias binding and flip it to the inside and sew it down easy so I have myself another short suit which I absolutely love this one I made like a week ago uh, using this fabric which is called plissé plissé is basically that pleated like crinkly fabric that you see. I see it all the time. I've never used it. And I decided that I wanted a plissé top. And I've been seeing quite a lot of that plissé fabric out in fashion in lots of different places. So I've decided it was time to have a go and tackle this new fabric that I've never used. And yeah, I had a grand old time and I made this shirt. I actually have more police, so I'll probably be making more things. But this shirt, I used a Vicky Sews pattern. This, uh, this shirt is the Vicky Sews Jenna. It's basically a kind of relaxed shirt with um, open lapels and it's it's just like really nice and it turned out really really nice in this fabric. A few things I had to do for this shirt, I had to use French seams all over this in order to keep the shape. It's a really hard fabric to interface because it stretches so if you want somewhere something to stay its shape then yes you can interface it but if you pull it too hard that interfacing can stretch with the fabric other than that and a lot of pinning to make sure things don't fall out of shape it can be quite a simple sew you just need to take your time and maybe use a walking foot on the sewing machine so it doesn't move things around i had some fabric left over and i really wanted to make myself some wide leg long palazzo pants to go with that but i didn't have enough to go all the way down to the floor so we go back to our trusty shorts so this is just your standard shorts pattern i used my lauren short as a basis for the legs i added inseam pockets and an extra wide waistband and that's pretty much it's like I didn't bother hemming the edge. The good thing about these plissé fabrics, it doesn't fray, so it doesn't require hemming, which is good because when you try to hem something that is striped and pleated like this, it can be quite difficult to have it be even. So uh, nice flowy shorts and they make a great pair together and they also look pretty good by themselves individually and honestly like I, I love these I love the set it's very bright but that's also something I do not mind so this next item is a top made out of this really nice cream rib fabric. So this ribbed fabric I actually picked up when I was out in Portugal. It's really beautiful, really nice cream color. So this pattern is the Lola Tank Top by Stay Stitched Patterns. It is a phenomenal pattern. It's so nice. The way that it is shapes, it goes all the way down. You've got a lot of armpit movement and it's also in three different sizes so you've got a cropped version you've got like just like a normal top version and then you've got the dress version so I made this one first just to see how it fits I made it in just like the normal version but I will absolutely be making 
a dress version now that I know how it fits. Really, really a big fan of this. And I only made this one because I needed a tank top. I'd seen everybody else make their own versions and it looks fantastic on every shape and every size. So I thought, yes, we're gonna try it. And now it's one of my new favorite patterns. And I have a lot of ribs that I have not used, which I will absolutely be using now. And maybe even using the same pattern for some gym tops as well. So making them in Lycra too. So if there is a tank top pattern that you're looking for, I would highly recommend going to look at Space Stitch patterns and looking at their Lola tank because I think it's really nice. It's a really, really flattering shape. So the next thing that I've got here is a set and this set was made from this really nice patterned knit uh, like fabric. This was another one of my projects as a Minerva brand ambassador. So you'll be able to check out the blog post for this and my wrap dress on the Minerva website. But this is the top that I made from the fabric. This is the Cool Stitches twisty crop top. Cool Stitches is a, a YouTuber. Her name is Nicole. She is from Portugal and she has a uh, YouTube channel but she also has an Instagram and she's just recently started making patterns full-time and this was one of her patterns. Her patterns are super super cute, really easy to make and really quite stylish, very trendy and this was one that I made. It's the twisty crop top, this is the front and this is the back or I suppose if you were feeling a little bit adventurous this can be the front and that can be the back. But um, yeah, really, really enjoyed this. Super easy to make. And um, there is a video tutorial. So if you have a little bit of trouble with this twisty back loop, you can watch it on the video as well as the instructions that are on the pattern. So yeah, I would absolutely recommend making this. The only thing I would say about this top in general is that this knit is very, very stretchy. So if you want a little bit of support, I would go for a more firmer stretch fabric. So if you've got a jersey, make sure it's a thicker jersey, but something that's got like a really good hold, but also a nice stretch. So it fits and it like supports your breasts because this is not doing much in the way of supporting, but it is really cute to wear. And I made it with the idea to be able to wear just a really cute top for summertime lounging and that works. So with the fabric I had a bit left over, again, I wanted to make some floor length long like wide leg pants, didn't have enough. So this time, instead of making short shorts like I did with the plisse, I made like colute mid-length like style ones. So a nice big stretchy band at the top for comfort, really high waisted, and then the legs are a little bit flowy. So this is quite a heavy fabric, but it's not super thick. It's just heavy in drape. And again, super, super stretchy. So these are like really, really comfortable to wear. And I often wear them together, but they also look good separately. The pattern for these trousers was a McCall's pattern M7757. They're meant to go all the way to the floor but because obviously I didn't have enough I just kind of cut them off at the leg and I didn't bother with a pocket because I didn't really want one. I just wanted it to be just something that you throw on and you relax in. And again the top was made from Cool Stitches twisty crop top. I will include all the links below if you want any of these patterns. So as I said at the beginning I've got a few things that I did make but I don't have them to show you because I just don't know where they are. Maybe somewhere in this room. I have no idea. So the first thing that I made that I can't show you because I can't find it was a unitard. That's right. You heard right. A unitard. I don't know what came over me, but I'd seen a lot of these like uh, bodysuit type outfits all over Instagram, like, you know, that standard Insta baddie thing. And I'd also seen them like in the workout world, like a lot of people wearing all in ones to go to the gym, like super comfortable. And I just, you know, I thought I, I could do with one of those in my life. So I went about looking for a pattern and I found one on Russian website grasser.ru. And I think you can also find it on grasser.com, which is the EU version of it. It's called Pattern 747 and it's basically a full length body suit that's super close fitting, but with spaghetti straps. So I used that pattern and I cut it off at the leg. So it was cycling shorts. 
and the fabric that I had was a black textured knit very close to this kind of gold fabric that I've got here and it's such an easy make it is literally only four pattern pieces and two of them are the front and back the other two are the straps I was able to whip it up in about an hour and 10 minutes that's including the cutting it was super easy and I am not kidding when I say it is the most comfortable thing I have ever worn. I chose a really soft knit, it's super comfortable, it's an all-in-one. When I put it on that day I wasn't going anywhere so I put it on when I when I was finished and I just didn't take it off. It was so comfortable. I put it on, I wore it all day, I put like a big hoodie on top and you've just got like the cycling shorts with the hoodie and then I just wore it to bed because I was just like this is the onesie of my dreams. So I will absolutely be making more in various leg sizes because it definitely works as a going out during the day outfit if you pair it with other things. Um, I have already worn it out with a pair of trainers and just like an oversized hoodie and then you've got that like Princess Diana look which is the hoodie with cycling shorts and some trainers that's what it looks like or again you can wear it with like a long shirt you can tie that shirt up you can put a pair of heels on and kind of do that look and yeah I absolutely love it so got plenty of stretchy firm fabrics behind me I will be using at least one or two of them to make some more and this section over here is all gym wear and swim wear so I'll absolutely be using that so I can have all my workout gear in like unitards because apparently apparently that's where it's at Unitards. The fabric that I used was also another one of my Minerva brand ambassador makes and I will leave a link if you want to see me uh, making a few yoga poses in my, I call it my pro wrestler suit because that's absolutely what I look like but I love it so much. Again I will be making many more. The very last two things I'm going to show you, one of them I literally can't find like my pro wrestler suit but the other one I have right here. So first things first I'm going to show you this hat in this like denim dark like blush sandy camo print. You may have seen this print before, I picked this up from Abacand about a year and a half ago and I showed it in one of my hauls back then and I decided I was going to make a bucket hat out of it. This bucket hat is a little bit different though, I lined it with silk so that I can protect my curls. Like I have a lot of hats but I find that I get a little bit of like tangling when I wear my hair down so now I've decided any hat that I have or that I can make I'm going to line with silk which means it's perfect, it just slides off my hair Head. Um, and yeah so that's going to be like my new standard for anything I wear for my head it's going to be silk lined to make sure we protect the tresses so um, yeah really really happy with this the matching item that goes with this is a top that I made from Vicky Sews so the Vicky Sews pattern is called Vicky Sews Beatrice I'll leave the pictures here so you can see what it looks like it is basically a like bustier type bra crop top with a zipper in the back and scrunchy stretchy shoulders. I don't think it's really meant to be worn just as a top by itself, you absolutely can, but the way that it's been modelled and the way that I wear it is as a over top so something I'd wear over a long shirt or a dress or you know a jumper or a turtleneck just for a little bit of extra layers or just like extra interest in an outfit. I really like how it is put together and the version that you see on the instructions is actually made out of leather so I think that's something I will definitely try and do next time because I do have quite a bit of leather and faux leather that I would like to turn into a few jackets, uh, a new leather skirt because I had one that I loved and I just cannot find it. I think it got lost in the move and um, a few other pieces. So I think I will be making that also again. This one I actually lined with the denim fabric but I think I might go back and take that bit apart and then line it with silk so it feels a little bit better on the skin or just not as bulky on the inside but other than that I really really like how it's made, I like the look of it and I really like that I have a matching hat so I can absolutely have a moment. I have loads more of this camo print uh, denim fabric left so I'm still trying to decide whether I should make a denim skirt, uh, some denim shorts. I don't really want to make any jeans with it, I will rather make a skirt or shorts 
or should I go for like an oversized denim jacket because like the camo print like it's pretty out there but I also think it's like a really nice fabric so I will absolutely be making something else but I don't know what it is if you guys have any ideas what you think I should be making with the rest of this fabric then leave your comments below I'll be reading them I would love to hear your ideas so that is it for everything that I've kind of made. I do have one more, which is more like a bonus thing that I'm only showing you because I can finally show you guys now. This is the Thea Utility Skirt. Now this skirt is a pattern that I designed. This is a craftopreneur pattern. And right now it's currently being featured in this month's Love Sewing magazine. So for those of you not in the UK, Love Sewing is a UK sewing magazine. And this month in the August issue, I am one of the featured designers. You'll be able to download this pattern to make this utility skirt if you buy the magazine this month. So I thought I would just throw that one in there because this is something that I've made. I've actually made four of these. Two of them have been sampled in the magazine. This is a mini skirt version. The version that you'll get in the magazine is actually a midi skirt, so it will be knee length, but you are absolutely able to make that longer or shorter. And in a couple of months, I'll be releasing that pattern on my website site and my Etsy store and it will have three different lengths. It will have a mini version, it will have a midi version and then there'll be a maxi version. So if any of you are in the UK or you're able to get that magazine and you would like to make this skirt then you'll be able to download it for free if you buy this month's magazine. So if any of you do go ahead and make the skirt, I would absolutely love to see it. I really enjoyed the design process. So I really hope you guys enjoy making and wearing it. That is it. That is everything that I have made from like April to like last week. I'm still making a whole bunch of stuff, but you'll have to see that in like a month or two when I've finished. I'm currently still doing the whole 30 fabric challenge and I'm still on a fabric diet. I've actually really been enjoying myself. So I may extend this a little bit longer than 30 meters because I'm coming up to like 24, 25 meters that I've used so far and there's still so much for me to go through so I might continue my little fabric diet for a little while longer maybe until the end of summer and then we'll have another reset around autumn. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video then hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think of the Thea utility skirt pattern? I would love to know your thoughts and if you haven't already then subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I post another video and I will see you in the next one.